Now let's take a look at how primary and secondary amides can be reduced to amines in the presence of lithium aluminum hydride. First, hydride attacks the carbonyl carbon in an ADN step to kick up a lone pair of electrons on the carbonyl. This creates the tetrahedral intermediate shown here, which then coordinates to the Lewis acid in an A sub N step. Next, beta elimination is facilitated by the loss of hydrogen, wherein a hydride attacks a proton on the amine, which then creates an imine species and kicks out the aluminum oxide species shown here. Now the imine species that's created can then be attacked by a second equivalent of hydride in an ADN step. This new tetrahedral intermediate that is formed does not have a good leaving group to facilitate beta elimination. Therefore, simple protonation gets us to the primary amine. Now let's see what happens when we switch from a primary or secondary amide to the tertiary amide shown here. The first two steps in the mechanism are the exact same, wherein hydride attacks in an ADN step, and then the tetrahedral intermediate coordinates to the Lewis acid to create this intermediate. Now the difference between this tetrahedral intermediate and the intermediates from the previous mechanism is that there are no protons on the nitrogen that can facilitate beta elimination through the loss of hydrogen gas. However, at high enough temperature, the nitrogen can use its lone pair in a beta elimination step and kick out the aluminum oxide species in a similar fashion. This creates the aminium ion. This aminium ion is then susceptible to nucleophilic attack by a second equivalent of hydride in an ADN step. This then creates the tertiary amine shown here. By studying the mechanisms contained within this webcast and the previous lessons on carbonyl chemistry, you should now have a firm grasp of the reactivity of the carbonyl group.